Suzanne McCurdy demonstrates how she teaches grammar in a meaningful, real-life context. Do you remember yesterday when I told you um, that I'm not from Minnesota? Yes. yes. Mm hmm. And where am I from? Colorado. Colorado. I thought maybe you'd want to know some more things about me. How long you lived here? Yeah, actually. Exactly. I do live in Minneapolis, you know that, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you have a small baby. You have a small baby. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you come the night. You can come That's why I can't come at night. That's right. <laughs> well, I'll tell you a story about me. Okay. In 1972, I was born. Mm -hmm. Yep. And you can hold that up, okay? Thank you. In 1977, I started school. I went to kindergarten. Mm -hmm. There were two big objectives. One was I wanted the students to talk about their life experiences, and the other, the grammar objective was to differentiate between the past tense and the present perfect. The reason I chose those grammar points to contrast is that a lot of my students are out looking for jobs, doing interviews, um, and this seemed like a grammar point that they weren't completely comfortable with. Um, but one that they would be using in those interviews and other life skills. This class meets four nights a week, two hours each night, and the curriculum is a life skills-based curriculum, integrating reading, writing, speaking, listening, grammar, pronunciation, um, and the class for tonight is a grammar point. So I've taught since 2000, so for how many years? Ten. Ten. Mm -hmm. In 2007, I got married. Yep. Let's see who doesn't have one. I got married. The first stage is to present the language in a meaningful context and to work with the students to build the language. Right. In order to provide context, I presented a timeline of my own life on the board, um, including both things that were finished, which would um, elicit the past tense, and things that were still continuing on for the present perfect. What happened in 86? I started playing. Suzanne creates a reason for using the grammar and engages learners in the process right from the start. What is it? Got married, that's right. And 2009? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Had. Mm -hmm. Or we can say my son was born. This one. Started school. Where am I? I'm kindergarten. Is this still happening or is it finished? I'm still in kindergarten? Right? I'm in kindergarten now? No? It's finished? So how would I say that? Mm -hmm. Say I started. I started. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And 
how would you say it about me? You. The class works together to create models of the target language on the board. My overall approach to teaching grammar is I like to have a real world context uh, for my students and I want the grammar to be discovered by the students so I use an inductive approach where um, the students build the grammar with me and uh, discover the meaning and the form together. Okay. What is this? Is this today? No, it's no, past. past. It's past. It's past. Yeah. We call it the past tense. Yeah, past tense. Mm -hmm. This one. Is this finished? What is this one? Do I still live in Minnesota? Yes. Mm hmm. Until now. Until now. Yeah. So, how long have I lived here? Uh, 14, 14 years. Suzanne allows plenty of time to figure out the patterns. You say you I chose a timeline because it provided me a means to contrast the two tenses and it showed the learners a reason for using one over the other. I got the learners to notice the difference between the two tenses by uh, using a variety of um, eliciting questions, um, asking them if certain events were finished and if certain events were still happening. Um, and of course they were able to do that right away and it started them thinking about how they would express themselves in those two different types of contexts. Yes. Right? Yes. She has lived here. Yes. Yes. Do we say four, yes. 14 years? No. Or four, Seven. 2003? Yes. Who said that? Yes. Seven years. Seven. Now Suzanne elicits when to use for or since with the present perfect. Okay, this is past tense. You know what we call this? It's a little different, right? No. That's good. Almost. Present perfect. Deciding whether or not to use the grammar terms um, is something I'm very thoughtful about. Uh, I don't always use the grammar terms. They're not always useful and they don't always move the lesson forward. I consider, first of all, do my students use the grammatical terms themselves? Um, what is their schooling background? Um, is it needed at all? Can I approach that grammar term just with um, an everyday term, like using the word yesterday for past. 